they're yours. Hit that one more time. I am the number one determinant of the success or failure. Here we go. Of my student. Hey, y'all, you have a strong summer. Kick some butt next year. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. That's the mindset. That's the attitude. Love you guys. And. We are live. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Week 110. Virtual AP Leadership Academy. Let's see who we got here today. We got first and foremost, my man, Ricardo Giannis is in the building. We got all the way from Alaska, Janine. Wilkins is in the building. Separano Wilkins is in the building. My man, Demetrius Scott. Marsha Poe is in the building. Yolanda McKinney is in the building. My man, Principal Otis Kitchen the Second is in the building. My man, Michael Benton. I guess everybody say, why are you saying my man? He's cats, I know, man. Tiffany uh, House is in the building. My man, Principal Carlos Baggage holding it down. My man, Anthony St. John in the building, man. I know somebody. Man, he's saying, my man, I know these guys, man. Ohio Girl Jones in the building. Mary Felton's in the building. Uh, where we at? Where we at? It just jumped because a lot of y'all came on at the exact same time. Let me let me go back. Here we go. Karen Fletcher. Uh, no, Felton. Not, Fe not Fletcher. Karen Felton's in the building. Dr. Roz Gaskins in the building. John Harris, that's my man, too. I met him at a conference, man. Where was he at? Where were we at? Tapsy. Yeah, in the building. Scott Wiley in the building. Uh, West Virginia. I'm going to be there on uh, Wednesday. I'll be in, in Huntington, West Virginia. We got Ty Scott Davis in the building. Emily Barzak in the building. Jessica Coleman, Adrian Young, Lily Lanier. My man, Superintendent Peter Finch in the building. Melissa Jones Chunu in the building. My wife, the queen, 33 years. You know, we some of y'all probably know because it, it got like 2,000 likes, but uh, 33 years of marriage. Yesterday, June 3rd, we went to rock out with Tina. What a play, man. What a play. We saw, we saw MJ the musical two weeks ago and then came back and saw Tina last night. I, I, I just got to say to y'all, I know I'm doing shout outs, but, but what a play, man. What a man <laughs> if you didn't see that come on to new york city and you got to check that one out that's you're gonna get your money's worth ron uh ron cresco is in the building uh rodney richardson's in the building my man principal sean hurt y'all make sure you listen to sean every sunday every saturday morning at 10 o'clock facebook live it's like you know we got like, we got this schedule man 10 o'clock i'm on watching him 10 30 i'm on watching uh create and educate dr sheikah houston and Tammy Taylor, and then 11 o'clock, I'm on here, and then Josh comes on, Tovar, Sunday night at 7 o'clock, right? Uh, we got we got Principal Dot McKeever in the building, McKeever Jeter in the building, Jeff Rapp, Diana Klingman, Dr. Sheka Houston just said her name, and Principal Tammy Taylor just said her, they both here in the building. My man Rashad Davis is in the building, bringing the heat from Vegas, where we at, where we at, where we at, where we at. I Man, some, a whole lot of folks just came on at the same time again, and this thing just jumped. Janice Price-Smith, Kathy Dalamante's in the building. Christine Clyburn McPherson's in the building. Berlene Johns in the building. Aztec, Spartan Rivera, Wendy Chinchilla, Demetrius Scott. I think I said that one, but I'm, I'm good, Demetrius. I'm on fire, man. I'm on fire. Arcella Austri's in the building. Yeah, you, Rom Crespo, you know, we got Ken on. I had to, I had to bring him back because, um, you know, when, when he was on for the, for the 90 minutes, the book wasn't out. So I asked him to come back on. So he'll be up in, in a little while, you know. Uh, so hang tight. Cammie Berry's in the building. Golf R.W.T. 
Facebook user. You better give me a name, man. I keep saying that one. Facebook user is in the building. Uh, Lisa Foster's in the building. Tierica Berry is in the building. Man, she's doing phenomenal work, y'all. Go to her, go to her Facebook page or look her up on Google for the for the uh, website, Tierica Berry. You see her on there. She's on Facebook. She's a um she's a SEL, social emotional learning presenter, educator. Wears a lot of hats, but you, you if, if, if any SEL work you need, she's on here. Tierica, T I E R I C A Berry. Just hit her up and bring her to you. I got her book sitting here. She'll be on here one day. I, I you know, I got we we are we are like booked for the next five years, right? I mean, I'm 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 not saying that with exaggeration. I'm I'm literally booked until like 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 2020 uh, 20 uh, where, where, where we at i don't want to say five years it's, it's maybe four years so 26 27 i mean i don't know man it's crazy it's crazy uh laura mayer's in the building candace norwood i guess it's a good problem to have though my man principal carlos johnson's in the building now, you know, I, I, I'm i not used to seeing your name this early on, Carlos Johnson. Is this because Ken Williams is in the building? Is You came here to check out Ken Williams? <laughs> Davis Chronicles is in the building. Diana Dick, Stacy L. Uh, Joy is in the building. Nancy Asagi is in the building. Lisa Foster is in the building. Look, y'all, it's time for me to get rocking, man. It's 11, it's 11.02. I'm like overtime, right? So that's going to push Ken back. So let me get started, y'all. Let me say formally to everybody now. Good morning. Greetings. Welcome to week 110 of the virtual AP Leadership Academy. And I don't know about you, I say it every week, but I do think I know. But in case I don't know for somebody out there, I just want you to know how I feel, right? I want to know how you feel because I want you to put them flames on the screen in a second if you're feeling like I'm feeling. But first, let me tell you how I'm feeling. I'm on fire! That's how I'm feeling, man. I love doing this portion of the broadcast at home so I could really release that, right? And 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 I didn't realize I needed to release it until like this year at some point, not in the first year. And I think I got louder with it this year. But I say it every week and I'm gonna continue to say it every week. I say that because you chose leadership. I chose leadership. And there's a certain level of enthusiasm that we've got to bring to the work. There's a certain level of energy that we've got to bring to the work. There's a certain level of excitement that we've got to bring to the work. There's a certain level of passion that we've got to bring to the work. So for that reason, I start this broadcast every Saturday by reminding everybody out there that I'm on fire! Woo! Ah! Yes. I got to get that out, man. Cuz the weeks are full. It's just so much going on. But I'm feeling good. Hit that share button somebody. Hit that retweet button somebody. Get that cell phone out and call somebody. Tell them for the next 90 minutes Principal Kefele is bringing the flames. But before I get to it, let me welcome, no, no, let me get to my motivational message real quick. Right, I, I had it covered and forgot I had it, man. Let me get to this real quick, y'all. This is more like a commentary than it is a motivational message. You know, we talk, I talk regularly about student voice. I, I wasn't taught that, though. That's just something I came into education with, that students have to have a voice. We have to create the vehicle for them to have a voice. 
Their voices have to be appreciated. Their voices have to be respected, even if their voices are not consistent with your voice. It's, it's, it's just an, it's so, so critical that we that we facilitate the process of cultivating student voice. But my purpose here is to talk about educator voice. Educator voice. And I'm just asking the question rhetorically. Do you use your voice? I'm not asking you to be a radical. I'm not asking you to be a militant. I'm, I'm not, you know, that's not my purpose here. But I'm asking you, if you have a voice outside of the realm of educational leadership, do you have a voice within the realm of educational leadership? See, and, and, and as I said to you two weeks ago when I went on a rant about um, it was either Buffalo or, or Uvalde. I don't remember which one because I, I know I went on a rant over both of them, right? But I, I'll say this. Yes, my voice got me into some trouble over the years as a principal. Yes, it did. I don't have any problem admitting that. It got me into trouble. It got me on every radio station, black radio in New York City. It got me on the television news. It got me at my termination hearing at the East Orange Board of Education, right? So, yes, my voice got me into trouble. But I will never forget, hear me somebody, I'm, a, I'm not going to be long with this. I will never forget my hearing. I was going to be terminated on September the 22nd, 2004, because of my voice. And I had this hearing, it was all over the news media, so all these hundreds, if not thousand people showed up at the hearing. And my young, my son of 31, whose birthday is this week, he was, he was a young guy in middle school. I, I said to my wife, I'm bringing Baruti, that's his name, like mine. I said, I'm bringing him to my hearing. If they get rid of me, so be it. And the reason I wanted him to see, see me in action, because I was going, you know, I spoke, and I wanted him to just see what, was, what it was, what, what the deal was. And I wanted to be able to go home that night and look in my mirror and feel good about myself. So I went in there, man. I spoke my piece. I must have spoken for about 45 minutes, man, making my point. And then at the end of the night, they said the board voted unanimously, 7 nothing. You did nothing wrong. Report back to school tomorrow. And then after that, I continued to use my voice. So I'm not asking you to go to that extreme. I'm not asking you to do anything, actually. I'm asking you, do you have a voice? Do you use your voice on issues that impact adversely the children that you lead? Do you have a voice? Do you use your voice? Because I'm going to tell you right now, then I'm going to step away from this. Your voice is a part of your leadership. You can't be so-and-so outside of the school and then you come into the school and then you, you step outside of your authenticity. And now it's not you anymore. It's just work you. Nah, who you are as leader is, a, is an extension of who you are personally. Who I was as leader, who I am as speaker is an extension of who I am personally. So who I am personally is driving who I am professionally. So therefore, I cannot deny nor suppress my voice. I've got to use it because it matters. See, so I'm just asking you as I leave this. I see you out there, Alicia. That's my milk and sister, Alicia uh, Squires Harris. Good to see you. I'm just asking you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not demanding on anybody. I'm just asking you. Do you use your voice? Does your voice matter? Because you have children, you have young people who are in some cases more dependent on your voice than they are what happens academically in a classroom. They need an advocate. They need a fighter. They need someone who's got their back. 
They need someone who could speak for them when they can't speak for themselves. They need you. So again, I'm not asking you to be going there and be a revolutionary. I'm not, that's not, I, I don't, that would be reckless on my part. I'm just asking you, are you using your voice? And I'm going to stop it right there. Let's move on. Welcome to the first timers. Welcome to week 110. If you miss, obviously no, it's not if you miss, if this is your first time, you missed the previous 109 episodes, right? So I want you to go to my YouTube channel at Virtual AP Leadership Academy and just binge watch, man. Just sit there and watch the 100. I, I can't even say it's 109 hours. Um because I because I they, these are mostly 90 minutes long. So it's about 150 hours of content. A lot of people say to me, Kafele, man. They, I mean, I hear this all the time. 150 hours of free content? Are you kidding me? Isn't that undermining your business? I say, you you don't have no wisdom. Is it undermining my business? It accentuated my business, right? Not, not undermine my business. <laughs> it accentuated. I got people, hey, man, I ain't doing that, man. I ain't giving that much content. Don't. But don't be calling me later talking about how can I get booked. <laughs> no, don't, don't call me with that. <laughs> don't, matter of fact, don't call me. Just watch me. <laughs> Let me keep going. <laughs> I'm laughing because Ken is on here. I'm looking at him. And, you know, we colleagues, man. <laughs> So we, I'm like vibing with somebody that y'all can't see. <laughs> Let me keep going, y'all. Let me keep going. It's too early to, for me to start having tears in my eyes, man. So, <laughs> hey, Ken, man, don't don't call me. Like, how can I get booked? No, just watch me. <laughs> All right, all right, let's get serious. Listen, y'all, um, <laughs> my school leadership institute, right? My school leadership institute, July 12 and 13, all day in person, live, right? Same room, just wear, you know, if you want to wear your mask, wear your mask, right? But be with me in Charlotte, July 12 and 13, we taking the academy on the road. I call it the school leadership institute. It's the fifth annual. Be there with me. Go to Google, Google uh, School Leadership Institute of Principal Kefele, volume um, um, an fifth annual, and you'll see all the information, man. Let's get together in Charlotte, man. Have a good time, man. We 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 work, but we laugh at the same time, right? Congrats to all them folks landing them positions, man. I'm getting the emails, the inboxes, the DMs every day, every seven days a week. Folks writing me, man. Some of some people write me these long ones too. I'm, I like them too. I'm not I'm not discouraging that. And they said, Kefele, man, you don't know. You don't know. You just don't know. I said, okay, I, I, I appreciate it, man. God is good. Praise God, man. You don't know, man. I couldn't get a job. Somebody hit me to you. I'm in, man. I'm in. Now you got to do the work at a high level, right? Let's go. Um, Y'all, you know, I got I to gotta plug my books real quick. The three new ones, ones, the Equity and Social Justice Education 50. If you don't have it, Amazon. Just go there. Get the other device. Like you watching me on a computer, get the phone. You can get it right there. The Aspiring Principal 50, right? And then the, this this the one I love, man. The, the Assistant Principal 50, man. Get, you know, get, get yourself a copy, man. Right? If you don't have it, get yours. And I think I'm done. Uh, I'm rocking the Homestead Grays, man. This is one of my favorite teams because this is Josh Gibson. 800 homers. I mean, the man, you know, when, 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 the, you know, we were talking about this with another guest the other day. And when the, when, when, when the major league teams weren't in them stadiums, the Negro League teams played in them stadiums. Josh Gibson played in Yankee Stadium. Knock the homer onto the street. The street. But a lot of y'all don't know Josh Gibson. You know Babe Ruth. But you don't know Josh Gibson. Black man. This is who he played for, man. I wear this. I feel like Josh Gibson wearing this shirt, man. I feel like Superman. I feel like I could, like, take my bat, man. Here you go. I feel like I could take my bat and just hit it, like, like, like down the West Side Avenue. 
right? That's yeah, I'm in Jersey City, right? So um, ah. hey y'all, you know I told you I, I asked Ken Williams. I said, come on by, man, come on by, and let's talk about that new book because I I got my copy right here. It's autographed, right? So let me let me get him up here. Let me get him up here. This you know Ken is here. He's stopping by. I I got I'm doing I'm going solo today. This solo Saturday, but I want Ken to stop by, man. So I got I got my man, my brother. Ken Williams in the building. Tell him hello, sir. Bruh, I, I had a couple of things planned, man, but you're opening. I just want to just touch on a couple of things. One, I want to thank you for this, uh, this opportunity and this incredible platform that you've built over the years. It just, uh, it just speaks to your brilliance. And, and listen, we were laughing about the giving away of content yeah. and yet, as a new consultant, I understood why people fear that stuff intuitively. I, I understand yeah. it intellectually it could, because it's, it's counterintuitive. However, yeah. what I've learned quickly, one is I always tried to grab the coattails of, of a few people who were ahead of me and I just submit to what they say, right? And so I heard early on, give it away, give it away. What I learned over time is that that's an example of an abundant mindset, which is to say, when you're doing the right work, there's enough out there for everybody. That's right. Right. So you give it away. And like you said, I knew I knew what the I could have finished your sentence. I knew those 150 hours result in you having a turn away business every single week. Yeah. You know, I do those little videos. I hear the same thing all the time. You're just giving it away. You're giving it away. It's like you, it's, you have to have an abundant mindset. That's one. And two, I love what you said about the voice. And that's just a great segue to my book, Ruthless Equity. If you see the cover there, there's a light bulb kind of taken off. It is so important to illuminate, you know. Now, like like Afele said, you don't have to go to the, you know, he's not talking about everybody going to the extreme where you are at a hearing about to lose your gig. Yeah. But there are so many places in between. I just, I call it illuminating. You got to illuminate. You got to model. As a field, we are not great at at modeling at putting so you see where Kefele pumped his books and this is something I learned from him because again it's counterintuitive because you don't want to sound like you're selling and you don't want to be pushy but you know what I learned especially writing this book this is my first solo authored book like I truly feel like him when you got something that you know needs to be in the hands of every educator and I'm not saying that from a I need sales perspective my bills are paid his bills are paid. When you know you got something that needs to be in the hands of every educator, you've got to shout it out. You got to shout it out and not worry about people calling you an edu celeb or uh, whether or not people talking about you just hawking books. When you when you've done something that's game changing, whether it's the consultancy, uh, whether you've done videos or you've written books, you've got to be able to pub it, man. And so I just decided I'm going to be respectfully and modest. Because I know, like he knows, equity is being talked about everywhere, which is a good thing. But it's being pulled in 500 different directions, which is the frustrating thing. I get so I was in Colorado Springs yesterday at the Air Force Academy working with a school district. And a woman walked up and she said, you know what? You're right. We've been just talking about it and talking about it and talking about it. It's nice that we have some way to grasp it, right? Put teeth to it. Talk about what moves the needle. And we got to do it in a way that, calls out issues, calls out problems, and coaches people up. See, there's a lot of calling out of problems. Yeah. You got bias, you am racist, you this, you that. But what that does is that puts people like this, yeah. especially when you don't have a solution for them. Yeah. You know, we've been talking about ability groups for years, and one of the things I'm most proud of is the chapter on dismantling ability groups. Finally, we have some tangible solutions. But my book, Ruthless Equity, is is about disrupting the status quo. And that's another thing. If you're not disrupting something, you're probably not doing anything. Mm. This is being honest with you. If you're not disrupting something, and again, there are degrees of disruption. Asking a question in a meeting, uh, providing one more suggestion about how we can meet the needs of a student. The idea of actually uh, having grade level or better, the goal for every student, all these things you know, can be disruptive. And we've got to do more of that. I'm just going to take a quick moment. I'm going to get a couple of minutes to just explain the, the title of the book. Yeah. So equity, one, 
you can't achieve what you can't define. You cannot achieve what you cannot define. And I was visiting New York City and at, uh, at a big high school in Queens. And I gifted the principal the book. And she said, oh, this is great. You know, our equity committee's meeting on Wednesday. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have seven definitions of equity around the room and ask people to go to the definition that resonates with them. And I just said, you know, I just want to give you something to think about. If there are seven definitions, is there a definition? Mm. Not seven examples of equity, not seven qualities of equity, seven definitions of equity. That's the problem. Equity in a culture of belonging and inclusion, equity is organizing to provide students what they need when they need it with urgency to master essential learning outcomes. That's what instructional equity is. And it's, it needs to be ruthless because you are hearing messages from outside that tell you poor white kids, poor black kids, poor brown kids can't learn. Kids with IEPs can't have the same expectations. Uh, ability groups must be in place, even though we made Carol Dweck a millionaire with growth mindset. All these things. Uh, kids from that side of town are broken and, and, and can't learn. Ruthlessness comes from this because it's rarely used as a, a positive term. When you think about those Olympic athletes, and I watch them, and I, I love the events themselves, but the stories behind their lives blow my mind. Where you hear about the kid who gets up at 4.30 in the morning, goes to the hockey rink from 5.15 to 6, then comes home and showers for 15 minutes, then is at the bus stop at 6.45, then goes to school until 3.30, and then is back at the hockey rink from about 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock, and then comes home and does an hour home. You know, that, that sacrifice. And what I realized with that, and that happens in every sport. To be excellent at anything, you cannot give your time, attention, and focus to everything. Those Olympic athletes are ruthless about the things that matter and equally ruthless about the things that don't. And with equity and excellence and education, we must be the same way. Ruthless equity is simple, powerful. It's going to punch you in the mouth and then kind of lift you up and uh, give you some tools to, to get things, to 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 achieve equity, identify the factors that advance equity, the factors that impede equity and the habits of mind and practice to leverage it. There's an enemy of equity that I identify in the book. It is complacency. And before you picture in your mind what you think complacency is, I'm telling you it comes in a hundred different forms. And I talk about it because there's some that, that, are, that are communicated with love in our hearts and the best of intentions, but are as harmful. Highest individual potential is a form of complacency. I'm telling you right now. And I'm telling you the extreme woke and the, and the racist are two sides of the same coin. Two sides of the same coin. Because the extreme woke spends all this time casting our kids as broken, talking about what they don't have, talking about what they should, don't have, what they're lacking. And of course, the racist doesn't think we can learn at all. Two sides of the same coin. Casting kids as broken does not set them up for success. There are people on this call right now, and I know Kefele is included. We could list circumstances that by society's definitions shouldn't have us sitting here on this podcast today. But we have parents with the kind of wisdom where they knew we can't settle for that. And so I get tired of hearing about kids who don't have internet, don't have internet at home and don't have Chromebooks at home. Okay, but they spend seven hours with you a day where well, you got Chromebooks for everybody and you got internet for everybody. So let's max out what we do in the school setting and let kids go home and be people and relax and play. I, I get tired of focusing on what they don't have. I want to focus on the talent and in the building. And Ruthless Equity has four rules of ruthlessness where we identify those issues. The first one is courage over comfort. And I'm going I'm to wrap up here. Courage over comfort is the first rule of ruthlessness. And that's what Kefele talked about. you got to have a voice. Being ruthless with equity is going to have you alone for a little bit. But what happens is when you have a voice, when you illuminate, I promise you, it's going to attract others. But in the beginning, I'm not going to lie to you. We as a field, for all we talk about, for all of the anti-bullying with students that we do, for all of the money we pour into that, and I love educators and I love education, but I'm going to tell you, we are some of the biggest non-physical bullies in our field you speak up in the meeting and have someone say oh you a brown nosing oh you you trying to kiss up the principal Kefele. and you know we say it in a joking way 
but it really does kind of chip away at someone's esteem and it has them hesitate the next time I'm going to put their hand up. Oh, you putting up a nice bulletin board. Look at you in that display. You trying to show off. Those are the kinds of, th those are small examples of complacency that just eat away, right? I'm struggling with Kefele as a student. I'm trying to figure out what my next move is. Someone makes a suggestion and then I look over at him and say, you suggesting something? I said, I tried everything. And now you're trying to make me look like a bad teacher. That's complacency at work. Yeah. When you walk in and say you are at your wits end with a student and you can't figure out what's going on, that should be an invitation for more suggestions. And so I'm going to, I'm going to wrap it there, but I'm, I'm telling you in a very immodest way, um, in this era of equity, this book needs to be in the hands of every educator. And I say that without hesitation, Anthony Muhammad, Dr. Anthony Muhammad wrote a forward for the ages, brother Kefele had input on this book as well and wrote an endorsement for it. I'm, I'm very proud of it. I'm honored to be here. Thank you for a few minutes on your platform, brother, man. I love yeah. you and, yeah. um, and continue you to do well with your 1127 episodes <laughs> of the Academy, man. I'm you. proud of you, brother. I appreciate you and proud of you. But before you go, let them know how they can get the book, how, they, right. can get, how they can book you. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, so you can scan the QR code on the screen to, to grab the book itself. And uh, you, you see that? Yo, he, he, high, he high tech. He got the code right on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you, you, you can go to Amazon. Uh, you can go to Amazon.com, of course, for... Uh, and, and grab it if you are interested in bulk copies like for your staff or for your district i discount them 20 percent. you want to contact me directly just go to just unfold the uh, can at unfold the soul.com or just go to my website and you will find it there oh my goodness that that is i, I did all that talking and forgot to talk about Don't worry about how to grab the book but yeah go to the website unfold the soul.com send me a message shoot me an email if you're interested in bulk copies I discount those uh, for, for, for schools and districts and we'll go from there, but it's on amazon.com. Super proud of it. Thank you, sister McKinney. I'm trying to glance at the comments, but I don't do well with that stuff, but thank you. Thank you so much, brother. And, and last thing, um, you're a presenter. Oh how yeah, that's right. How, how did they reach out to you? <laughs> hey man, that's why I'm You see them still need guidance. <laughs> yes. Yeah. How do they book you? That's what I do. So, and how do they follow you? Yes. So at the bottom of the screen, you see uh, Unfold the Soul is my company. And you can, that's pretty much my handle on all social media platforms so on Twitter at Unfold the Soul, on Facebook, Unfold the Soul. Same with LinkedIn. Uh, same with Instagram. My website is unfoldthesoul.com. And uh, thank you, Sister Book Night. Um, unfoldthesoul.com, where I do this work all over North America. Um, I consult with schools. Leadership, coaching, training, speaking. I love the work. This is my life's work. Like the good brother, I wake up. And while it can be a grind, I pinch myself every day. I, I pinch myself every day doing this work. And um, I promise that um, if what you need is within my skill set and you're willing to get in and get your hands dirty, I can help you move your school or district forward. There's no question about it. Yeah, I'm talking about academic achievement. There you go. And you see what Will Turner just said on the screen there. Oh, <laughs> I'm getting coached up here. I also do a podcast on a weekly basis called the Bless His Heart Leadership Podcast. Uh, when I moved to Atlanta and inherited the lowest performing school in the district and the lowest performing district in the greater Atlanta area, my mentor, Ellie Day Young, gifted me with three big fat journals and she challenged me to write. And I don't like writing. So I journaled my journey every day for three years mm. and now years later i read a passage from my journal uncut and uncensored i talk about my mindset then what wisdom i've gained since then and we just keep it moving it's a they, they average between 10 and 15 minutes a week it's called the bless his heart leadership podcast because when i got to atlanta from maryland i'd lost my i, I attended morehouse but i kind of lost my southern hospitality mojo got to the first pre-planning day for administrators introduced myself everyone was very warm and they said where where are your principal and i said swint and they said bless your heart and i said thank you so much and every third person said bless your heart 
And I thought it was a compliment until a sister, older sister, she was old enough to be my mother. When she asked where I was going to be principal, and I said, Swint, and she actually laid hands on her brother. Hum, hum, hum. Bless your heart. And that's when I knew I'd inherited the Hot Mess Express. And so I talk about that, the leadership that's required to, to, to move schools. I don't like the word turnaround because that sounds like you just going in there, just knocking stuff down. You know, I'm just talking about improving. We, we improved. And it was sustained over time. And we did it without a whole new population of kids coming in, right? We did it with the talent in the building, as my man Bo Ryan talks about, the, the brilliance in the building. We did it with the collective expertise of the folks inside. And um, I appreciate that. I appreciate you guys uh, <laughs> holding me up and mentoring. And I got to get better at promoting my stuff. So that's all great. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, I, I appreciate you being here. We, you know we're going to have you back on. Now, for those of you that don't know, Ken and I did 90 minutes in November. So if you missed that, just go to the virtual AP Leadership Academy uh, face, uh, YouTube channel, and uh, you'll see it there. It's November, and we did it. was a Thanksgiving weekend. We did That's all right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, That's so right. just watch that. And then uh, he'll be back. You know, I'm going I'm to be putting together some panels with different people in uh yeah, you know, I'll certainly be inviting Ken to be a part of that. That sounds good. And happy anniversary a day later to yeah. you and the queen. Yeah. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the weekend, brother. And uh, for everyone else out there, man, just the, the time you put in on these Saturdays, man, I'm just going to pay. They just pay dividends. You know that. That's why you keep coming back. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. I'll see you soon. All right, brother. Thank you. All right. Yes, sir. All right, folks. I appreciate you um, being here. You know, we're not done. I uh, Today is what I call Solo Saturday. And every Saturday I'm going back to just going solo because I got, you know, I bring on all, all these guests on and they, they got their their information. But I've also got things I want to talk about that I don't want to necessarily talk about when they're when they're here because that's their day. So now that um it's it's the first Saturday of the month and that's the solo Saturdays, every first Saturday, here I am. Right. So let's jump into it. Uh last the last Saturday, and you might want to get your your pen for this one. I got I got a lot, y'all, and I got to talk quick because I got I want to get as much in as I can in the, in the period of time that I have left. But um, I want you to um, recall back in in May, the first Saturday in May, I said I'm doing a two is a two to three year um, theme called protecting your leadership effectiveness. You may recall that, and we we dealt with authentic your leadership authenticity. That last time that we were together for Solo Saturday, we talked about your leadership credibility, your leadership brand, your leadership reputation. So so today I want to go to I'm still in protecting your leadership authenticity. And remember, for those of you who weren't with me, that word protecting, I'm saying that you can establish something, you can grow something, you can develop something, but you can also lose it. Right. Various different circumstances could force you to lose that which you have grown. Right. That which you have established, that which you have developed. So you have to find a way to protect it. And, and two, of the, two of the examples I use when I talk about protecting something of yours could be protecting your peace. You could be in a state of peace. But because you didn't protect it, because you didn't safeguard it, you are now no longer in this state of peace. You're in this state of chaos. Right. In terms of just the things happening around you, but it impacting you adversely. And now you don't have your peace and it's overwhelming you or your happiness. You've got to protect your happiness, not just have happiness, not just establish happiness, not just develop your happiness. But at some point you got to protect it. You got to guard it. You got to shield it. You got to lock it down. Right. And if you don't protect it, you can lose it. And now that person that was so happy last week, now you're sad. Now you're frustrated. Now you're disgusted, whatever it is, because you didn't protect it. So here, I, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with a lot here. I'm talking about protecting your leadership authenticity. But under this category of authenticity, I'm focusing today on your people skills. Once again, your people skills. And I know I was over overly ambitious in writing these notes because I actually started on Monday and I kept on adding and adding and adding. 
And I'm not going to get through all this today. So I'm going to get through what I can today. I'm not going to go any later than, say, 1230, right? And then, uh, and then we'll see what happens. So protecting your, your uh, people skills. But your people skills now, there's so many subcategories to that. Such as let me let me just list the ones that that are that are most pertinent to me when we talk about those subcategories: communication skills, verbally, non-verbally, and writing, right? Um, but but also inspiring, approachability, relatability, likability, dependability, reliability, empathetic, compassion, trustworthiness listening skills, reading the room, coaching, cheerleading, equity, empowering, collaborating, problem solving, and servanthood. That's a whole lot. So, so I'm not going to get to all that today, right? But I'm going to get to what I get to. So get that pen out, get that pad or that device, whatever you're going to use, I want you to get this, right? So communication skills, verbal and nonverbal is where I want to start off. And, 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 and I'm asking the question as the overarching question, are my verbal and nonverbal communication skills an asset to my leadership? Once again, are my verbal and nonverbal communication skills an asset to my leadership? So, so, so I want to focus. You know, when I when I was putting this together and thinking, okay, what area will I focus on? Because you know, time. This is not a six hour presentation. I want to look at the staff meeting. Right. Because this is that time. And it may some of you, it may be once a month when you become principals. Those of you who are principals, it may be once a month, assistant principals, whatever your role is as an assistant in a staff meeting. But this is that time. This is that locker room talk. Right. This is when you've got your staff, all of them together. And this is where not only you can share your message, but this is also where you guys can collaborate. Right. You guys can work, can 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 come together and, and, and work together on various different items. This doesn't necessarily have to be a time of administrative issues. You can put that in a staff bulletin, which we're also going to talk about in terms of the writing. And then the staff meeting is all about teaching and learning. The staff meeting all about empowerment. The staff meeting all about information, pertinent information, not the administrative stuff, though. The staff meeting all about inspiration, right? So all these different components that bring the team together to get us refocused, to get us fired up and ready to go back into those classrooms tomorrow. So I wanna focus on the staff meeting as it relates to your verbal communication speaking skills, right? So let's look at it. I got a series of questions for you and then I'm gonna give some commentary with each one. So I want you to write these questions down. For those of you who haven't been with me for the past two years, you're newer and you may be wondering, why don't you have this, this stuff on the screen? It's because when I'm on the road speaking, the folks pay me well, they really do, right? They pay me well. And if they were to tune in on a Saturday morning and see that what they paid me thousands of dollars to do, I give it away for free on Saturday, they they probably sue me. Right. So 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 instead, I don't do Saturday the way I would do it in person in terms of the, all the text on the PowerPoint and all that kind of stuff. I don't do that because I don't want a client to see me on a Saturday and say, wait a minute, we don't even need to bring you in. We just watch you on Saturday. Right. Or we or we paid you X number of dollars and you gave it for free on Saturday morning. So that's why I don't give you text. Right. So that way you got to listen and write. Let's go. I got a, I got questions for you. Number one, how do I and everything is self-reflective. We all about looking at ourselves. How do I open my meetings toward capturing the attention of my staff and engage them simultaneously? Again, how do I open my meetings toward capturing the attention of my staff and engaging them simultaneously? Let's let's look at that. The key word in this question is the word open. Right. How do you open that meeting? Think, I want you to think about this. Hit that share button for me too. Hit that retweet button for me. A staff meeting is at the end of the day. Your staff has been in that building theoretically way before students arrived. They taught all day long. Whatever the trials and tribulations of the day were, they were. Whatever the challenges and obstacles of the day, they were there. 
And then all the victories, successes, and wins, they're there as well. So it's a full day. So now it's the end of the day. Teacher is wiped out, ready to go home, but they got a meeting. You got a staff meeting. Chances are you got a lot of folks in that staff meeting that don't want to be there. I'm asking you since they are there, what is it in this question? How do I open my meeting toward capturing the attention of my staff and engaging them simultaneously? Let's look at that because I, I can promise you this is not something that you're going to find in your typical graduate school course, graduate school program, right? I'm asking you nothing about the meeting in this question. I'm asking you how you open the meeting. I'm taking the fullness of a meeting and segmenting it, segmenting it to this little thing called opening, which is really a big thing. How are you opening the meeting? Because see, Ken might still be on here because I saw him in the chat. Yeah, he is here. Ken knows as a speaker, those of you who are watching who are speakers, the opening matters. I see the rookie inexperienced speakers walk up on them stages and jump into content. That ain't how you do a presentation, particularly a keynote. You can't just walk up on the platform. They read your bio. You walk up on the stage. You walk up on the platform and bam, you into the body of your message. No, because there are people in that audience that never heard of you before. See, these ain't all your fans. There are people in that audience that don't know you were born. There are people in that audience that do know you're, you were born and they ain't feeling you, right? So now, what is it? There, there's another speaker, Tierica Berry, on here. So now, what is it that you're going to say before you get to the body of your presentation that grabs their attention, man? Like, got them. Like, oh, oh. I will. I go see Tina Tur Tina last night to play on Broadway. For those of you who were with me in the beginning. Uh, celebrating my wife and I's 33rd wedding anniversary. <clears throat> and the way it started, they put Tina as she was later in life, sitting on the stage with her back to the audience with the blonde wig, you know, she wore the leather, and then that staircase that became iconic when she made that comeback. It started with her on that, with her back to us looking. I said, oh, they got me. They got me. They didn't like jump into some 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 plot from her from her story. They 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 said let's even though the people paid to come and see Tina, let's still grab their attention first before we begin to tell the story. I'm asking you. I don't you know I'm not going to take the time to give you strategies to this here. That'll be another time perhaps. But I'm asking you: Is it a part of your thought process? Is it a part of your thinking that I need to open with something that grabs their attention, an icebreaker, for example, something that, that reels them in and they are now ready to hear the rest of the meeting, ready to participate in the rest of the meeting? Because you because we do want them engaged, but your opening, you can't just go into your staff meeting, you walk in there, all right, blah, 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 blah. They sitting there like, hey, I've been here since seven o'clock this morning. I gotta hear this man. In fact, they might they, they might think hey, I gotta hear this man, but they might be saying like this, I gotta hear this fool, <laughs> right? So I mean, I'm just keeping it real, right? So 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 therefore, there's got to be something there that 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 you're gonna say something, you're gonna engage them that gets their attention first. How do I open the meeting toward capturing their attention? And engaging them simultaneously, right? So, so, so the, this platform was originally created for the aspiring principal, assistant principal, the assistant principal. But then I noticed, you know, we we got everybody coming on here. We got we there have been state commissioners of education on here. There have been superintendents on here. There still are superintendents on here. Principals on here. So therefore, we're not just applicable to somebody who's aspiring. We applicable to everybody. You might you might want to hit that share button, hit that retweet button, because if you think that opening message was something, <laughs> I got some stuff on this and these notes today, y'all. You better tell somebody, right? So let me let me go to that number two. Am I able to captivate the attention of my staff? Right. So I'm beyond the opening. Is there something about who you are as leader 
Like I, I would I would like to think that I have captivated the attention of of a lot of people over the past two years with this platform. Right. So I'm asking you, is there something about you that people want to engage with you? See, this this one of them ouch questions, because, you know, the answer. But the question is, do you want to deal with the answer if the answer if if the answer is the negative, right? Like, is there something about you that that captivates the attention? Like, like there are people, and I'm not one of them, but I see them. There are people who, when they walk into a room, the room lights up. They light up a room, right? They, they, I, they, they, I got a cousin that that I, I watch him from time to time when we when we have big gatherings, and he walks into the room, and it's like, <laughs> wow, everybody paying him a lot of attention, right? And and it's like. The same thing with you as a leader. Is there something about you as leader? Like I got the mirror up, Josh. I didn't even wipe it down, man. If if, if when 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 you walk in there, is there something about you when you start articulating your thoughts? Is there something about you that gains their attention? Or or like here's my phone. Do they keep it down here low and they 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 like on Facebook, <laughs> right? Right, Instagram. Right, watching a TikTok video, and, and but or they got it situated in a way that you, that you think they're looking at that, that 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 you think they're looking at some notes or their computer, but they're really watching a video or something that's unrelated to anything that you're trying to accomplish with that meeting. See, but but you gotta you gotta you gotta go to your mirror on that one. See, you gotta be honest with yourself because every one of these questions that I'm gonna ask you, you already know the answer. Let's go. Number three. Am I able to hit here? Watch this. Am I able to command the room while establishing and sustaining an interest to be heard? Woo! See, I, I went beyond attention now. As leader, and I keep comparing leadership to public speaking because there's a, a there's there's a there's an important component of leadership that is public speaking, that is oratory, not just a staff meeting, but a parent meeting, a community meeting, a student meeting, a board meeting. There's so many, a church meeting. There's so many different, different genres of places where you're going to be called to present. But as leader of the school, because you're representing the school when they call you, I'm going to get that mirror, Josh. They, 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 you're representing your school. So when you walk into that room, within your leadership, have you developed an ability to command the room? See, command the room. I might add, y'all, I'm writing this book like, um, I think I'm going to start it in September. All this is going to be in that new book, Protecting Your Leadership Effectiveness. But I still want you to get this now, right? So when you walk in, can you command? I'm looking at Marcus Jackson on here right now. He he has those qualities, right? Dr. Marcus Jackson out there in Lancaster. See, not Lancaster, Jackson, Lancaster, right? He, he has the ability, because I've seen it. I've seen it with my own eyes, to walk into a room and command it. See? So let's say you're watching this morning, and you know that skill is an area of deficiency, because it's a skill. You're not born with that. Some people, I mean, some people, there's a certain aura about them, but that's not what I'm talking about. So you're, you're listening and you're thinking, you're processing, huh, I don't know that I command the room. I don't know that I got it right here. Well, that's something you got to work on. That An intentionality to be able to walk into that room and it's yours. You can own it, see? that you can command the room, see? So, and, and, and Ken just said, yeah, that, that's that MJ. And that's, you know, that was my guy. D MJ, definitely. It's, you know, he, 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 he out there in them European countries, in them stadiums, but it was his, see? Command the room. Let's keep, let's keep moving. Is it, cause it's going to get heavier. Is my staff attentive and engaged? Watch this because of my title of leader or because of my leadership whoo somebody somebody might need some water on that one man 
Let me, let me, let me, let me give that one again. Is my staff attentive and engaged because of my title or because of my leadership? See, my title of leader or because of my leadership? Are you talking about Mark? <laughs> <laughs> yeah hey yeah so so the other mj marcus jackson right yeah no yeah yeah so you agree with what i say yeah ken marcus I, i've seen him i seen i seen him at the black educators rock conference and some other places he got it he he, he understands what that is right so let me go that let me give you that question again is my staff attentive and engaged because of my title of leader or because of my leadership see if 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 you're strong if you're powerful if 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 you're if 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 what's the word i'm looking for just if you're strong or powerful because of your title that's not enough if you never heard that before you hearing it from me if if you get in your strength because of a title that's not enough your strength your ability to be able to do the work you do has to come has to, has to be born out of your leadership not your title of leader because eventually whatever power whatever authority that you have through that title of leader it is going to dissipate it was go it is going to vanish it is going to disappear and 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 and, and people, they'll just react because you happen to have that title. But when your leadership moves mountains, when your leadership moves people to act, when your leadership inspires, when your leadership encourages, when your leadership empowers, see, that's a different individual from the one who everything happens because I wear the title. Everything happens because my name is on the door. Everything happens because my name, my title is on the desk. That's not good enough. See, what, a, what, a, what about your leadership? There are in the sports world, and, and matter of fact, in the corporate world, to any, any world of leadership, there are assistants who can get staff to do much more than the primary leader because of the difference in leadership. See, leadership matters. Let me keep going. We talking about, your pre so, so now with all of that, these first four that I read to you, as you grow in these areas, now you gotta protect it. See, and that's the whole, that's, that's that word. You gotta protect it. Because if, 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 if you were, you, you're sitting here listening to me this morning, you listened to Ken earlier this morning, and, and you're growing as a result of what you heard, right? You're developing as a, as, 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 as relative to what you heard, but then you don't do the things to protect those gains you've made, you can lose them. And, and someone might be asking, well, what do you mean? Like at the staff meeting, for example, you let your guard down, right? And you say things you shouldn't be saying because you're that comfortable with staff. See, you're not in a position to just say anything. I'm not in a position to just say anything on this broadcast because although I like to get light with light on here sometime, I like to laugh and that type of thing, but I am not going to say things to undermine my own credibility. See, that's something I will not do, right? I'll laugh. I'll act silly. I'll act goofy, right? But I will not say something to undermine or sabotage my credibility as an educator, as a leader, as a presenter. I won't do that. So I will protect my authenticity. I will protect those communication skills. I will protect the way I'm being perceived as I've developed my leadership to a, to a, to, to a point where I'm being perceived as an effective leader. You got to protect it. You got to guard it. You got to shield it or someone may rob it from you. Something may rob it from you. Let's keep moving. 
Am I here's another they all big, y'all. Am I skilled in the use of vocal variety? Huh. Let me read it again before I break it down. Am I skilled in the use of vocal variety? In other words, I'm talking about your oratorical skill. Right? You you know the great speakers can can take it up here somewhere, can can can, can go rapid fire, can slow it down, can bring it down can pause it because the pause is communication too but just got so much variety as opposed to a monotone where my whole my whole 60 minute meeting i speak like this i'm boring as heck but everybody is forced to listen to me because of my title right see as a as as as, as a presenter you got to have variety in your vocals you know, you listen to a singer, you expect that. But as an orator, you're an orator as a leader. You have to have vocal variety, right? You can't you can't be in that staff meeting or anywhere you speak to staff, students, etc., parents, community, and you don't know how to not 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 articulating your thoughts in this case, but articulating your thoughts in a way that it is very pleasant to listen to. See vocal variety a lot of times we have to learn that i certainly did I, I took a course in public speaking back in 1985 one of the best best things i could have ever done not knowing i was going to speak at the level that i do now but i learned i, I learned vocal variety i learned hey, let me give you this i learned the power of the pause in other words to 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 be in the midst of something powerful some words some statement and then go like this here And then come back to it. I, I mean, I learned that. There's power in that pause when used when when used correctly, right? So vocal variety. Do you bring that vocal variety? Because we're talking about you being able to hold the attention of a staff after working eight, nine, ten hours in, in the day or being in the building that long. So so we're talking about your communication skill. That's what this is all about, your communication skill. And do you have that skill set to keep their attention when they're worn out at the end of the day, right? Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Am I knowledgeable of and conversant in everything on my staff meeting agenda and it is apparent in my delivery? Let me go again. Am I knowledgeable of and conversant in everything on my staff meeting agenda and it is apparent in my delivery i have seen it folks i won't drop names of people but i have seen it where folks are covering x y and z and don't really know x y and z right it's just it's just some notes but they don't know it see that's like if i sat here and i read these questions but i didn't elaborate on the questions i just read them right mm -hmm. Cause so so I could sit I could sit home you know like an like a singer like a rapper whatever and and generate some content. But now how am I demonstrating that I know my content? So I'm not going to just read you a list of questions and then not fill in the gaps with the commentary to reinforce what's being said. So I'm saying to you to read the question again. Am I knowledgeable of and conversing? in everything on that staff meeting agenda and it's apparent in my delivery you got to know your stuff you can't get up there as parliament funkadelic said you can't get up there and fake the funk because when you fake the funk your nose will grow that's the pinocchio theory right so you got to make sure that not only do you have the content but you are conversant in the content and it's going to come across in your delivery. Let me keep going. Am I confident in my leadership in this role? Let me tell you something. I know this to be definitively true. There are people in leadership who are not comfortable with the public speaking portion of their leadership. They good with, 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 with you know, other things to do. Right. They're, they're, they're good with with some of the other components of the work. 
but 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 that that oral communication that oratory oratorical skill that matters too so when i ask the question am i confident in my leadership in this role if you're if 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 here you are leading a staff meeting and it comes across that you're not confident in yourself. You're not confident in your leadership in that role, in that capacity. You're not going to be effective because everybody's going to see it. Everybody's going to be able to discern it. It's going to be evident in that room that, that you're, you're good in certain aspects of the role, but in terms of conveying Whatever, whatever the message is, whatever the thoughts are in that setting, you're not comfortable. You have to be able to demonstrate that you are comfortable talking to your staff. Even if you've got a staff you inherited, you know, you're new to a school and there are people in that audience. I mean, not audience, but people in that room who it seems that they don't really care for you. It seems they don't really like you. It seems that they don't really respect you. Well, you got to be able to counter that. And if 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 you're in that situation and you look uncomfortable, I mean, as a speaker, I know I'm in rooms where there are people that don't like me. I know that. I'm not crazy. I know there are people in rooms that don't respect me. But I ain't going to let them get to me. And if it does get to me, I ain't going to let them see it. I'm going to they, they going to see man, we, we disrespecting this dude. I told y'all I was in Maryland not too long ago and the folks who had to, they, they, not, they were not only looking at the phone. It was like a little segment of people on my left-hand side. They weren't only looking at the phone. They had it up here looking at it. First, I said, well, are they filming me? And I, so I, I, I moved strategically to find out. And as I moved, I said, oh, the phone didn't move with me. <laughs> so so they, they weren't, they didn't do this, right? So I said, no, they ain't filming me. They they said screw you, buddy. <laughs> we we don't we don't respect you, and we're going to show you and held the phone up that high, looking at the phone while I'm down there speaking on that stage or in front of the stage. But I ain't let that let me. I I I, I it didn't. They didn't see me sweat because I didn't sweat. I addressed it. <laughs> I addressed it respectfully, and them phones went down. And that's what I'm saying to you. Same thing, right? Same thing. Um, let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Um, am I able to put my staff at ease during challenging times? Oh, man. That's a serious one right there. There, there, there There's a multiplicity of times where you're going to be in, in challenging situations, right? I don't, I don't, I'm not talking about the extreme of, 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 situations where you got a, a someone an intruder in the building with a gun i don't mean that but i mean just challenging situations there's a whole lot of different challenging situations for a leader and i'm asking you within those challenging situations do you have the communication skill set to put your staff at ease and for them to feel confident that my leader meaning you my assistant principal my supervisor meaning you has my back, is fighting on my behalf, is advocating for me. See, do you do you, do you possess that? Because if not, that's the whole purpose of this of, of this broadcast. I got the mirror up. The whole purpose of this broadcast is these these are areas that you may need to consider of yourself. That hmm, I don't put my staff at ease. I'm I'm contributing to their frustration. Right. So you don't want to contribute to the frustration. You want to be able because you're in that leadership capacity. You want to be able to put them at ease over the situation. Like, let me give you this example. I shared it with you before. Those of you who were with me that day, but I'm gonna give it to you again. I'm gonna give you the short version. One of my superintendents, like I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lesson planning stickler, like 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 I believe wholeheartedly in lesson plan. I don't care what somebody's rationale, research, whatever it is that we don't need to do lesson plans. I say, hey, if you work for me, you do, right? Because I'm because I'm a stickler for planning. Like like all these notes I got here. That's that's how many pages I got. I got I got five pages of notes here. I plan. I don't. I I could come on here and wing it. I got enough up here, but I refuse. 
I, 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 I plan for this. And I know that there are people that tune in who, who, who are relying on the information. So I'm going to plan for this. So now superintendent says, I want the staff district-wide to instead of planning for one week, I want the, the district to plan three weeks in advance. I'm like, three weeks? So in other words, we are struggling school, all the schools in the district, we we're struggling schools. And you want us looking into not only this week, but two weeks from now, three weeks from now? And we struggling with the immediate week? So the, the memo went out. My staff is frustrated. Like, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? I told my staff, I got you. Now, I'm only the, the principal. I'm not the superintendent. But I still told them, I got you. They felt good. Now, I go to um, the superintendent privately because I'm not a grandstander. Grand, let me say this to you. This, ain't, this is not on my script either. Grandstanding doesn't work. So when you get with your colleagues, you at the principal, the administrators meeting, and you, you got something on your mind, and the other principals feel the same way, so you're going to try to make the superintendent look bad at the meeting? That's a loss right there. That's a lose-lose situation. You can't win that because now he's got to save face. She's got to save face. Now, I'm not going to grandstand. I'm going to wait till my colleagues leave, and then I'm going to hang out. Hey, Doc, can I talk to you for a minute? Yeah, yeah, what do you want, Cafe Lay? Now we good, right? It's, it's just one-on-one, -on -one, me and him, me and her, whatever it is. Hey, Doc, the lesson plan, man, it's, it's, it's going to be too, it's too challenging in terms of where we are right now. I don't want my teachers projecting into three weeks. I need them locked into this week. We're going to get it done if we locked in here. He said, man, I ain't think about it like that, Cafe Lay. I mean, I'm, I'm giving you this short version. He said, I didn't think about it like that. He said, I got you. I'm, 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 we're going to scrap this. We go back to one week. I went back to my staff, man. We good. See, communication skill, advocacy, having their back. See, so part of that verbal communication we're talking about, is there something about the way you talk to your staff, the things you say to your staff, that you're able to put them at ease in challenging situations? Right. And Lady J said it. And don't let the union hinder that lesson planning. Yeah. Because because see, I'm going to speak about it rationally. Why planning is necessary. And again, I'm just using this as an example. I, this, this is my 110th week of doing this consecutively. I haven't missed a week. I have 110 sets of notes in a folder on this computer. I don't I don't I don't wing this, man. We're going to plan this thing out, man. I'm going to plan everything I do. I plan life. So we have to plan, right? Let's keep moving. Next one. Am I able to own district mandates I don't necessarily agree with? Now, I want to, I want to, I want to, first, I, let me use the word I used. Am I able to own district mandates I don't necessarily agree with? And then I want to couple that with another question. Am I able to sell district mandates that I don't necessarily agree with. Here's what I'm saying. The lesson plan. Let's say that my staff was frustrated about them plans and I added to the frustration. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm with y'all. This, this, this ain't right. But this is a district initiative. I can't stand up there in agreement with, 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 with the frustration of my staff as leader of the school. So although I'm as frustrated as they are, if not more so, I'm still a part of that organization. So I got to own that until I can get it shifted. I got to sell it, even though I don't even though I can't embrace it until I can get it shifted. I can't I can't own it. But yet speak in a way that demonstrates the staff I'm frustrated about it. So I'm going to own it in their eyes, but I'm also going to let them know I'm going, I'm, I'm going to see what I can do. I got you. Right. But I can't go. I can't get to my, to the point where now I'm in, I'm engaged in that same complaining, frustration, anger that they are. I can't put myself there because if I can't get it shifted, I've got to hold them accountable. 
How am I going to hold staff accountable for something that I have publicly said I don't agree with? There is no accountability. I have sabotaged myself. I have undermined myself. So I'm going to own it. I'm going to sell it. But then the behind the scenes, I'm going to have it shifted. See, communication skill with staff, communication skill with the superintendent or whomever it's coming from, assistance or whatever it is. But you got to have the skill set. Imagine you, now, now I'm talking to the rookies out here, but I might be talking to some veterans. Imagine you're frustrated and you take that frustration to the meeting with the superintendent. And now privately, you in there yelling and carrying on, ah, we can't do this, I can't do it, it's not going to work. You can't sell nothing like that. Here's, where's, where's my book at? Here it is. I mean, I didn't write it. It's just the book that goes with this presentation. How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. You got to know how to talk to people. You got to know how to communicate with people. And you got to understand that different people respond to different things differently. Everybody's not the same. So you got to be able to develop a skill set that you could talk to person A the way that that person needs to be talked to, but you can talk to person B the way that person needs to be talked to and person C, et cetera. You can't talk to them all the same way. But see, that's got to be a part of your intentionality that I'm going to develop my skill set in these areas. I'm Here, I'm thinking about, the, you know, the things that we th typically think about with school, you know, safety, SEL, equity, overall leadership. But I'm saying to you, I'm giving you these things in terms of just how am I communicating my thoughts to the various different stakeholders? Let me keep going, y'all. Have I developed an ability or skill set to make a meeting interesting. Mm. Let's say that again. Have I developed an ability or skill set to make a meeting interesting? I mean, the most complicated stuff, you know, the most intricate stuff that you could have in a meeting. And you have developed a skill set to maintain the interests of your staff, that meeting has become interesting. Again, I'm not going into the specificity. We don't have that kind of time. I'm giving you food for thought today. You got to think about that. You got to think about who you are, your own skill set. You got to think about your staff and how do I go about communicating with them in areas of, of, of just complex things that we're grappling with? How do I make this an interesting conversation? How do I make this talk interesting? How do I make this dialogue interesting? How do I make this collaboration interesting for my staff? Let's keep moving. Here's a big one. Am I respectful of my staff's time? So one, one might say, what's that got to do with communication? Watch this. I know that I go 90 minutes, sometime a little bit more. Because folks go on the thread and say, keep going. <laughs> but here's the thing. I'm not going to go two and three hours. Because I do have an agenda here. And I'm respectful. I'm, I'm appreciative that folks actually tune in. And, I'm, I'm, and I try to be respectful of your time. As opposed to rambling. See, I'm, one of the things I, I'm not doing is rambling. I don't think I've ever done that on here is ramble. I'm always following a script here. Always. So I'm saying to you, I'm respectful of time. But I have had supervisors who operated without an agenda and just had called the meeting and they just let it rip. And what should have taken no more than 45 minutes, this is literal, not, I'm not exaggerating, what should have taken no more than, say, 45 minutes was about a three, four, five-hour meeting. That's I'm being literal with you, not, not exaggerating, no hyperbole here. Uh, something that should have been about 45 minutes turned out to be four and five hours. They had to order lunch, and lunch wasn't part of the agenda because we were going to be out of there by then. So I'm saying, as leader, knowing your staff is working as hard as they are, but you know you've got certain information that needs to be covered, 
but are you able to communicate with them in a way that respects their time, keeps everything to the point so that we can get on out of there and start our life outside of school until we get back to school the next morning? Or are we going to just go on and ramble, maybe preach, right? Go on a tangent. And now staff can never leave because, because we're not respectful of their time. So we got to be able to communicate our thoughts and ideas and, and whatever the agenda is, whatever the information is, and, and, and as concise a period of time as possible so that they can get out of there and regroup, rejuvenate for tomorrow. Next, am I engaging, am I engaging as opposed to a strict lecturer, right? I mean, imagine that staff is, imagine you got a staff that, that is cooperative in their approach, that they do engage children, and then they come to the staff meeting and they got to sit there and listen to you all night. Is your staff meeting such that it's engaging, it's participatory, where they get to collaborate with one another, as opposed to, you know, like, like a lecture at the university, and they got to just sit there and be attentive and just listen to you for an hour, right? So they sit here like this. They worn out, but now it's, it's showtime for you. That's rough, man. I'm saying to you, are you engaging as opposed to just being a strict lecturer? That's important. Next, sometimes you got to lecture. I get that. Sometimes you just got to tell them you, you got to give information. So I don't want to discount that. But not every time. you get together. Next, how is my tone in addressing my staff? That's a big one, y'all. How's your tone, man? Are you are you always mindful that these are adults? Are you always mindful that you're not even the oldest one in the room? Are you mindful that these are parents in this room? These are other care uh, um, um, uh, caregivers in this room. These 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 are other these are some of them are pastors, right? Some of them hold high positions in churches, right? They do they hold high positions in the community. Are you are you are you cognizant that these are not children in that room, and thereby you're cognizant of your tone when you speak to them? Because see, sometimes we 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 think that um, we can talk to him any kind of way because we we got the title right. I'm the boss. I'm the principal. Ah, rah, rah, ah. You like like you mad? It was building, man. Like like the staff meeting was two weeks apart from each other, maybe a month apart. So you've been waiting for this day, and now that day finally is arriving. You ah, ah, ah. and like like have have you forgot these are adults? Like there's some grandparents sitting in that room. There's some elders sitting in that room. There's some highly respected people in other capacities sitting in that room. And you in there, ah, like, like they're your, bi your, your, your biological children or, or your children you adopted. Your tone. That's why this is so important, man. You got to watch your tone. You can't just go in there talking to them in any kind of way. Your communication skill. See, your tone matters. Right. It matters. Let me let me let me let me let me let me keep going here. So coupled with that one. How is my overall demeanor being perceived by staff? Again, how is my overall demeanor being perceived by staff? Does your presence turn your staff off? That's the question I'm asking. See, does your presence turn them off? Because with your presence, are the words you are you articulate? See, so so in other words, on Monday you said X, Y, and Z. Now, when they see you on Tuesday, what you said on X, Y, and Z that becomes a part of who you are. That becomes a part of the perception of who you are. So now your presence, without your your nonverbal presence, just this, they see the words you used yesterday, right? That language you used yesterday, the way you spoke yesterday. Now that's a part of your overall presence as the leader. So you have to be cognizant of the words you speak because the words you speak, the way you phrase them, your tone, et cetera, become your overall presence. Becomes who you are. And, and always remember with your presence, your presence is your leadership representative. You cannot announce your presence. Your presence announces itself. It speaks for itself. And you can't say things to counter your presence because your presence is the way you're being perceived. So how is my overall demeanor being received, perceived by my staff? 
Does your presence turn your staff off? Next one. I got four more. Do I ever use staff meeting time as a personal gripe session? Think about that for a minute. And let me be transparent. Someone asked me that question. Yes, I did. Particularly um, as a rookie. Right. Yes. I use my staff meeting time to to release. You know, like like I come on here, I'm on fire. Ah! Well, it, it, well, that, that the equivalent was let me just go off at this staff meeting. Yeah, when I was a rookie, man, I didn't know better. I ain't had no principal Kefele coming on here teaching me, right? It, it did, it did. You know, these platforms didn't exist back in them days, right? So I didn't have that. I didn't have that in my life. So, but, but now, you know, like, like, like this is not me doing, you know, this. But there's a there's this there's a zillion presenters out here, colleagues of mine that do this work, and then you got me in here with them on Saturday morning at ten fifty five doing this work, and and now you can tune in to all of us, and here for me, I'm saying like let me read the question to you again. Uh, do I ever use staff meeting time to compl- uh, uh, staff meeting time as a personal gripe session? So now I'm in the staff meeting like just going off, man. Going, oh, I'm looking at my staff. They, you know, half of them nervous. You know, they sitting there. And and, and it, it, it was interesting because most of us, we have an amen corner on the staff. So that might be like four, five, six of them. And they usually clustered together. They cheering that stuff on. They clapping. Hey, yeah, go ahead, Kefele. They, they, they egging you on. But, but the other 50, <laughs> they ain't trying to hear that. So, so, so don't, don't, don't use that time unless it's just an extreme aberration and you're going to get yourself back to where you need to be because we are human, but don't, don't, don't use that time for the most part as your personal gripe session. That's, 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 that's not the time for that, right? That is, that is not the time for that. But then coupled to that question, do I ever use staff meeting time to complain about, criticize, watch this y'all or tear down one or more teachers without mentioning their names. So in other words, you mad at somebody, right? They did something you don't like. And now it's 50 people in the staff meeting, 100 people in the staff meeting, and you you want to take a jab at that one or two. So you hit them. They know you're talking about them, the teacher. But the rest of the folks don't know. So now they're like, they sitting there, man, he talking to me? I don't, I don't think I did anything like that. He talk, so you got a hundred people saying, is he talking to me? Now you have lowered the morale of an entire staff because you're upset with one or two people in that room. And instead of having a meeting with the one or two, you use the staff meeting to go at the one or two, but, but in turn inadvertently put 50, put 50 to a hundred other people on edge. Because they're like, man, he talking to me? They in the parking lot. Oh, man, who is, he, who is he talking to? So now the things they need to be discussing, that took a back seat. And the topic of the meeting after the meeting, that's the one in the parking lot, is, man, y'all heard what the principal said? <laughs> like, I wonder who he was talking to. Like Darlene just said, there's the, you just used the word, deflated everyone. Right? Deflated everyone. Man, you hear what the principals are? I wonder, wonder who he was talking to. I hope it wasn't me. <laughs> wow. Right? So they so so the question was: do I ever use staff meeting time to complain about, criticize, or tear down one or more teachers without mentioning their names? If 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 you do that, stop it. Like, stop. It doesn't work. Darlene said it best. Darlene Pettit. It deflates the entire room, right? Um, let me see what Stacy's saying here. It says, "I feel like you feel like you see what happens in every." Uh, yeah, my heart breaks. I want to be a leader. To be, I, I want my leader to be dynamic and on fire, but it's not happening. Yeah, I, I I hear you, Stacy. Be a source of encouragement for that leader. I got two more. Have I developed the skill to allow teachers? Oh, this is a big one, y'all. Have I developed the skill to allow teachers to save face after a comment I disagree with? Woo! Y'all, y'all need to hear that one again. Have I developed the skill to allow teachers 
to save face after a comment that I disagree with. So in other words, teacher says something, you don't like it. So you're going to go at the teacher? See, we're talking communication skill today in the staff meeting. You're going to do a little, little subtle thing, a little subtle dig at the teacher because she says something that you don't like, you don't agree with? And I don't mean like she came at you. I don't mean that. I mean just the response. No. You're trying to build a family, right? You're trying to build a winning team, right? You're trying to build morale, right? Then let that teacher save face. It's no, it's no, it's no mark or strike against you. Let that teacher save face, so that teacher can go home happy at night and then come back to school strong tomorrow, right? Even if you, I mean, you disagree with the teacher. All right, y'all can talk privately later on, one on one. You don't have to make that teacher feel small in front of all them colleagues. And then guess what? The ones who are close with that teacher, the ones who are empathetic with that teacher, they're not gonna like the way you handled that anyway. Now you got new problems because you didn't let the teacher save face. We're talking communication skills, y'all. They don't always talk about this in grad school. In fact, I don't know if they talk about it there or not. I guess it depends on who the teach, who the professor is. So have I developed the skill to allow teachers to save face after a comment I disagree with? And I, and I might say this to you. As a presenter, doing Q&As and all that kind of stuff, I always have folks that I don't agree with. But I ain't going to stand up there in the room and, and, and make them feel small. There's strategic ways to, 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 um, to reply back to a person without the person feeling embarrassed to ever speak again. Because, see, when, when, when you and I respond in a way because we don't agree and now the person feels small, guess what? They ain't never going to raise their hand again. They done. And that's including the work I do as a presenter. They ain't, I'm done with this. I, I, I tried to participate, and this guy made me feel small. I feel embarrassed. It's a thousand people in this room, and I feel embarrassed now. Right? No, nah, no. Nah. You 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 allow them to say face, man. That's that's how you do that. Let me go one more. I got one more on, on this category. How do I? How do I? Oh, this is a big one. Remember that first one? How do I open my meetings? Well, watch this one. How do I close my meetings? in ways that get staff ready for tomorrow. Imagine you dealing with a, a, a tough topic. It's, you know, it's just a lot there. And then once you think you figure you've exhausted whatever that topic is, you say, have a good day, I'll see you tomorrow. And now everybody's head is spinning because the topic was so complex, so intricate, so complicated. Nah, no, no, have a good day. Let's, let's close the meeting on a high note, right? See, See, that's, you know, a lot of this, I know it because I'm a speaker, you know, so like, like if, you, you know, like some of you, if you, if you tune in early when I come on, on the broadcast and it has me doing that little, I am, um, speech that I do, I am, um, I am the, um, and, and, and it goes on. So I'm saying, I'm saying this to you, that is my signature close, right? So you see that video. Uh, and it says, I am the number one determinant of the success or failure of my students. That's my signature close. When I do a keynote, I, that's how I close 100% of the time, right? Because it, 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 it tends to get my audience fired up. Well, as a, as a, as a principal, those of, for the APs out there who will one day become principal, or if you're the one closing a meeting, if your principal has trust and faith in you and you are allowed to have tremendous input into a meeting, including closing, well, you want to effectively close that meeting. Not just we dealt with some heavy-duty topic or even some heavy-duty controversial topic. And now you say, okay, have a great day. No. you you want. I don't mean you got to do a I am the number one determinant of the success or failure of my student. I'm not saying that. You're not doing a speech. But I am saying you want to close that meeting in a way that folks feel good. That's all I'm saying. You want to you give attention to how the meeting closes right it's 12 29 y'all um here's what i want to do i'm going to carry this over into um the first saturday in july because i got I, I got like pages more to go but i want to do this i, I just want to run a quick list without commentary 
of written communication. I, I can't wait for July for this one. I just want I just want to give you this. I'll get to the nonverbal next week, next month. I'll get deeper into the written next month. But I just want to give you this list of like 10 items without commentary. It'll take me like less than a minute. Your, your written communication. It is critical. Your written communication. You got to know how to write. And, 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 and I, I hope this is received the way that it's intended. You know, I know that social media is not formal writing. I know that. But when I'm looking at a administrator or a teacher on social media, again, I know it's not professional writing. I know it's not formal writing. But when I see certain phrases and, and sentences and paragraphs that are like really, really grammatically poor, I know that that's not because of social media. I know that's that's that person is doing the best they can. Because they ain't going to put themselves out there like that. I mean, like, like, I mean, it's just I'm talking about the terrible stuff. I don't mean the the, the 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 typo here, typo there, because I do that. I got some people in my in my world in my orbit too that will send me an inbox and say hey, you need to fix that, right? So it's good to have them people in your life too. My man Eric Cork is if for those of you that know him, he's the main one. If I if I got a typo, he'll hit me right up. Yo, Kafele, I know you didn't mean for it to go that way. Thank you, sir. Right, let me fix that right away. But but I'm saying to you. As 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 a principal, as an assistant principal, you have to know how to write. I mean, it, you can't you you can't fake the funk on this one. You can't circumvent this one. You have to know how to write. So I just want to give you this list real quick. I'm not going to give no commentary. I'll do it next time. Your staff bulletin, if you do one, that thing has got to be it, it, it cannot have flaws in it. Your staff newsletter, the part that you write, it's got to be flawless. Flaw free, right? Your your staff memorandum. So you write a memo to staff or a memo to individuals on staff, and you got a bunch of typos or just grammatically incorrect. You you can't do that. It speaks to who you are as leader, and it speaks to your pride in yourself. Your what you write is your representative. So you can't just and you got to proofread your work. Anything you putting out the staff, you got to proof it or have some other eyes proof it. I would have my head secretary proof a whole lot of what I wrote. And she would catch some things that I didn't catch. Your website statement. Again, I ain't giving commentary. It's got to be flawless. Reports that you write, such as to your superintendent. How are you going to write a report of, of an incident to your superintendent and the soup can barely read it? And I'm and I'm being I'm being kind of firm on this because I've seen this. I've seen it. I'm not speculating. I've seen reports that that look like some high school student who's not proficient in grammar had written it. I've seen it. I'm like, oh my God, they wrote this? And they're the leader of the school? They're assistant principal? So reports that you may write the superintendent to superintendent to other stakeholders. Memos to central office administrators. How are you going to be principal and you wrote the director of so-and-so and that person can barely read it or it's got all these typos in it? No, no, you cannot. You cannot. There's no wiggle room, um, somebody out there. There's no wiggle room. You got to write this thing as a proficient writer. Letters to parents. Oh, man. Imagine you write a, a letter home to parents, some emergency or or just some, you know, some procedure, whatever it is. And it's got all these grammatical flaws in it, man. Come on, man. You, you, we're talking about your written communication. You can't do it. And like like Principal Kitchen just said, there's no wiggle room. You can't have a you, I mean, the one typo, it's not acceptable. So you meant to write the, T-H-E, you wrote T-H-A. Yes, we are all human, but that's a mistake you cannot make. And not only that, if you wrote T-H-A, your computer is going to have a red line under it. You just got to acknowledge the red line to say that it's an error. But you cannot send letters out to the public and, and, and they have grammatical flaws. Letters to community stakeholders emails to various stakeholders now one might say ah it's just an email uh-uh no it ain't because it's coming from the principal it's coming from you 
So it's more than just an email. It's an important document, right? So you you got to proof it. You got to proof it. You got to proof it. And maybe have somebody else proof. Put some other eyes on it, like your head secretary or, or your AP, your, or if you're the AP, your principal, whomever, to make sure that, you, that, that, that what you're putting out there is sound. And not only the typos, but but the thoughts and ideas, man. I I, I said I wasn't going to do this until next week, but I but I let me just say this: what you're saying might not be right. You may be saying something that doesn't need to be said, or you may be saying something something that's not being conveyed the way you intended. So now you had one thought process in mind, but the way it's being received, they're hearing something, they're reading something, a message very different. So now you may want to have someone proof it, not just for grammar, but for how you expressed yourself. You may be expressing yourself in a way that is counterproductive, right? Your, um, we, we talking about your, your, your communication skill, in this case, writing. Your writing skill. You got to be a writer, man. And then lastly, your social media posting. I said I started this by saying social media, you know, it's a different animal. But look here, if you doctor somebody, <laughs> if you principal somebody, if you assistant principal somebody, you superintendent somebody, your teacher somebody, you grad school student somebody, <laughs> let me tell you something. Even your social media, unless you like joking around and it's obvious, they know you just it's just a joke. OK, fine, because I do it. I'll, I'll be the first one to write ain't and he be right because I'm playing. But I mean, when you serious and you can't and, and you expressing yourself that way and you got a public out there that might be sharing and they know you a principal and they don't know that, you, that like like you think you just writing to your friends. Oh, it's just to my Facebook friends. They know me. Yeah, but they might share it. Or someone else, you know, the, the algorithms, man, they put, man, you don't even understand them algorithms, man. Them algorithms put you all over the place. Right? I, you know, like 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 yesterday, my, my anniversary. So I see, I'm seeing names because I had 2,000 likes. I'm seeing names I ain't never seen before. I'm like, who are these people? Right. And, and it had like 700 comments. So people saying happy anniversary. I'm like, man, they telling me happy. I never seen their name. I don't know them. Right. So them algorithms are tricky. So you may think you write into your friends, but them algorithms might have something else in mind. And now this thing you wrote, you thought you were being innocent. It got to the it got to some activist computer. Right. Somebody, some community activist, some education activist. And, and they in the city or the town that you're principal in. And they, they now they sharing with you. you know, look, look how they look how she writes. Look how he writes. And it's the principal. Right. Now, you got to be careful, man. We talking about your written communication. I ain't talking about your pictures and all that. That's for the whole nother topic. Your written communication. So what I covered, because I'm done. All the all all these other notes and stuff I got here This for another day. I was over ambitious today when I planned for this. But. I'm, let me let me just recap it. Your verbal communication, your written communication, it, it it's got to be sound, y'all. You principal, you aspiring principal, you got to know how to write. So if you sitting here right now, and 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 I mean, like like I, I look at the way Dr. King writes, for example, right? I can't write like him. I can't write like a lot of people I read for. As a matter of fact, I write like me, but I but 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 my writing is sound. I, I, I'm just not a metaphor guy and can do can, 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 can do tricks with words. I, I I don't have that. Maybe if I practice it, I could, but I don't practice that kind of thing. I can I, I'll just make it plain and can get my point across. Right. So other people, they can be a little bit more fancy with it. I just I just get my point across. But I'm saying to you. How whatever your style. Just make sure the intended message is the one that's being sent and make sure that it is readable. Because if not, then it can undermine your entire career. Everything you work for, your credibility is destroyed. And you remember I talked about protecting your, 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 your leadership credibility a month ago. Now I'm talking about protecting your authenticity as far as your communication skill. Writing and um, in, in, in speaking, right? Protecting it. 
You got to protect it. You got to guard it. You got to shield it. You got to cover it. Right. So I'll get more into the writing next time. And I'll also get into the nonverbal communication as well, because there's a lot to be said there. And then I got a whole lot of other stuff because I only covered three out of the 20 areas of um, of communication. So with that said, let me say first and foremost, thank you to Ken for being here for them few minutes. Um, it's good to have him back on. Thank you to all of you for being here as well. Next week, um, you know, I got you, you'll recall those of you who have been with me. I did a, a program from a book, this book. Fighting the Good Fight, Narratives of the African-American Principalship. I brought three, no, five of the authors because there are 30, I think it's 35 authors that wrote this book. I decided I don't want just the three of three to, I think I had four of them more. I don't want just the four. I want them all. So I called up the editor and I said, look, every second Tuesday, give me, give me three of these, give me three of these writers. And we're calling it fight. We're calling it leading while black. Right. So I just want to focus on what it is to lead while you're in black skin. And, and that's going to be the specificity of those Tuesdays. So it doesn't mean we're not relevant for someone who's not black on Tuesday because because the message is the message. But I want them to speak through the lens of being African-American leaders as it relates to what they wrote in this book. So that'll be every second Tuesday, except for August, August, the second Tuesday. I'm going to have uh, Robin Jackson on. I think a lot of you know who she is. She'll be on with me the second Tuesday in August. But other than that, for the, for the next about 10 second Tuesdays, we're going to be talking about leading while black. So tune in. I, I don't know which three I'm going to have on, but they'll be here. Tune in. So we'll see you then. So again, every Saturday morning, Facebook Live, Sean Hurd at 10 o'clock, Dr. Sheikah Houston and Tammy Taylor, Create and Educate at 1030, Unlock the Middle with Josh Tovar and Dean Packard at 7 o'clock, Eastern time. These are all Eastern times on Sunday night. And then the village leadership group with Dr. Roz Gaskins and Coach Williams, Tuesdays and Thursdays at six. Hey, y'all, don't forget um, if you don't have the equity and social justice 50 yet, just get your hands on it, man. It's red hot. Get your hands on it. Get it now. Get it out the way. Make sure you get this. This is the main book for this platform, right? Assistant Principal 50, right? So, so I, I would go as far as to say you need this one. But I would also say if you aspire to become an administrator or even a principal, if you're an AP, you need this one too, right? So get your hands on all three. I got other books down here. I might, let me just throw this one up here. Is my school a better school because I lead it? I might say you need that one too, right? So get your hands on that one. Maybe I, I got one more leadership book. Why not just throw the other one up here? The Principal 50, right? So if you don't have these books, these are my leadership books. I'm not going to show you my teacher books right now, but these are all my leadership books. Get your hands on it. And then I'll be protect, I'll be working on protecting your leadership effective, your leadership effectiveness starting in September. With that said, folks, thanks for being here. We had a great session, I think. I think I gave a lot of good information in terms of communication. We'll see you next week. I'll be on at 10.55. I'll be sitting right here. 10.55. I'll be in Cincinnati this week. I'll be in West Virginia this week. So those of you who may be out watching right now who are going to be there, I'll be there. I'm bringing flames. I'll be ready. Looking forward to being there. Other than that, folks, have a great week. Have an extraordinary week. Have your best week yet. Peace. Peace. Thumbs up. Cock that fist back all the way and count to three with me. One, two, three. Bam! See you next week. Stay strong. Be well. Take all the precautions you have to take, whether it be health, whether it be safety, whatever it is. Just make sure you keep your eyes and ears wide open. Don't walk around looking at your phone and you're, not, you, you, and you're oblivious to what's going on around you. Know what's happening around you. Peace.